and uh, welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I am uh, back in London at the um, London uh, Mithraeum, the Temple of Mithras, as I uh, knew it before. Uh, so in this video I'm coming to this uh, new space and as you can see it's part of the new Bloomberg uh, European headquarters. And actually if you look around, I mean nothing about this building really uh, makes you think of Roman times or the Mithric uh, religion. So I mean, it's I, I, as I understand it, this is the original location of many of the archaeological finds. So I thought what I would do in this video is supplement um, this experience in the new space with the old version uh, images I have of that from 2004 when I was here in London teaching in our study abroad program and indeed our students went uh, to the old space to experience a little bit about um, religions. This will be the tour today. We'll go inside and um, take part in this immersive experience here in London. All right, so we'll begin the tour today here looking at some of the uh, innovative technological aspects of immersion that you note at the London Mithraeum. So this basically allows the guests to interact with the archaeological fragments that are made um, available to the guests here in this wall display. And as noted in the literature, quite a bit of the actual remains, a majority of them, um, probably over 99%, are not on display. So you maybe have some of the richer ones here available, and then you can look at the corresponding artifact on the display to our right, and use the tablet and that tablet allows you to really get in depth which I think archaeologically in terms of um, a pedagogical device is very innovative. We'll come back to that in a second but here's the old location from 2004. Um, at this time I was teaching in our London study abroad program and I mentioned this to my students I said hey you know would you like to go see an old um, Roman temple of a very esoteric pre-Christian religion and, and uh, so we took this as part of our activity for culture anthropology at the time. This is the location that we'll be going in. So this is the new um, site of the Temple of Mithras. And let me show you the old site. So circled there at the top middle, right across from the famous uh, Sterling Poultry Building, is the old location that you're seeing the images from 2004. And then on the bottom left there, that's the current location in Bloomberg Space. So I'll take you into that um, current location, we'll look at all the sites and the sounds and, and have a look at one of the more fascinating sites, I think, in the city of London. So this is the old location again, right across from the poultry building. It's quite different. Essentially, you have these ruins that are uh, made available. There is some um, literature, a plaque that you'll see in a second here, but it's nothing like the site today, and I wish that the students could have seen uh, what I saw in 2018, because I think as an educational site, as a quasi-museum site. It's hard to call this a museum, interpretive center. It's, it's one of those that kind of defies categorization. But I think it needs more immersion to make its effect on the guest. Um, you can see how weird this was in this part of the city, the city of London, the banking district. And you just had this location in the middle of all these office buildings. And it was, I think, very strange for me and my students to see this. It was sort of like, wait, why is this here? And of course, it's here because of the location, the significance of the site. Um, but it had such a strange appearance then, I think, because it was so wide open and just available. On the one hand, it was very public for people to see it. On the other hand, I think, from an educational standpoint, it was maybe challenging, say, to take a class there and to do a legitimate educational uh, talk or visit. This is the new location at Bloomberg Space. And as you can see from some of the images today, this is a very, very much a corporate center. Um, I know they're adding on to it. There'll be probably more shops and restaurants. This is the facade as you see before you enter the space. And so it really is quite inviting. And it does, I think, um, require you at least to notice it. And I should say, uh, if you plan to visit, you should go to, um, you could type in London Mithraeum or Temple Mithras. The Bloomberg Space site will come up and there's a very easy procedure by which you get a ticket, um, basically emailed to you, you take that PDF and it's a free entry. But it does get uh, busy, so you should probably book ahead. Um, this of all things is the restroom. I'm always trying to look at what does the restroom look like in any of these uh, immersive spaces that we visit. So not highly themed, of course, uh, as you might expect. Here again is that interactive um, opportunity to explore some of the ruins so we can take a look at that again. And that essentially is the first thing. After you pass, you show your ticket 
and you're um, given entry, you're told to explore this activity here. And I happen to take uh, some video uh, with my camera, so we'll, we'll look at that now. And essentially, this is your pre-space prior to entering into the um, basement floor, which has the majority of the exhibits. But I think this is a good opportunity for the guests to really get a sense of what the site was like. And so you can look at the Roman site, you can see the fragments of the buildings, you can see many artifacts here. And it does give you this um, opportunity to really learn about. You see these key words are identified. So from an archaeological, speaking as an anthropologist um, who has done at least one archaeological dig, and um, you know appreciates archaeology, I would say that it's important to give guests a sense of what archaeology is about. I think there's a fantastical image of archaeology in popular culture, and we often forget the scientific side, the side focused on antiquity and so forth. So kudos to them for creating that pre-immersive experience that is, I think, highly educational in nature. Here are some of the plaques that describe the site. It talks a little bit about the Temple of Mithras, um, an all-male, they call it a cult, um, you know, religious order. So it gives you some sense of the history. And you get a little more of that when you go into the basement and you start to um, interact with some of the touch screens there, after which you actually go into the reconstructed temple and you have an immersive experience. So this is the stairway going down. So after you spend some time with the artifacts, and it's not really time, they don't tell you per se, you can then head downstairs, and as you walk downstairs, I'll show you later, um, it's actually a historical timeline. But before we do that, let me focus a little bit on the brochure I received while, visit, while visiting the London Mithraeum. All right, so hey, I'm actually back um, in my room. I had a chance today to visit the London Mithraeum, and I think you saw from the video that it's located in Bloomberg space. And um, as you saw from the outside, I think it's, it, it really is an odd location. I mean, the location is really based on where the archaeological um, site was discovered. But when you see it today, it does have that kind of, you have that sense that it doesn't quite fit in with the contemporary uh, surroundings and the business of um, Bloomberg Corporation. So this talks a little bit about um, the reasons as to why it, it is where it is. It has, um, these are really high quality brochures that they pass out, maybe as you might be able to tell from the video. Um, this talks a little bit more about the building itself, um, when it was found, and how it became to be um, a part of the current location. This um, basically goes through the um, various locations. And so you start off in this um, area that has a, um, this is like where you start off in the lobby area. You see the Roman artifacts and um, that's actually fairly cool. I think the way they did it, um, as, you, as you're seeing on the video today, um, where you can actually use tablets and then you can zoom in on the 600 artifacts. And as they mentioned, there are actually 14,000 artifacts in total um, in the collection. You then, um, what they say is descend through time. I think that's a little bit of a misnomer, but you go down a series of stairs and um, you'll see on my video today, the stairs have a timeline but there's nothing themed or, immer or, or immersive about the stairwell. So it's, it doesn't really have that time travel component in an immersive sense. Then you discover the um, um, Mithric tradition and there are some video screens. Um, and that's actually kind of a, a cool space. That's the space you wait in prior to actually going into the temple. You then go into the temple and see the reconstructed ruins and experience a modern ex um, evocation of the cult of Mithras. And then there's also contemporary art commissions at Bloomberg Space, which I didn't visit. Um, this has a little bit, so this takes us through everything. So this talks about the um, artifacts themselves. Um, this mentions, you know, the 14,000. And I think, you know, having studied archaeology myself, I would say that this is definitely a um, a good opportunity for museums and archaeology to think more 
critically about how to present information to the public, maybe in a compelling way. Um, this is then this second part where you go down the stairs, and this has the timeline represented here. So the oldest is down here, and then it goes upwards, I guess. So presumably, yeah, the top of the stairs, you start with the most contemporary, and then you descend downwards. And the thought is that you're time traveling down here um, into the, uh, the lower area of where the um, temple actually was. Um, and this talks a little bit about the archaeology involved. As I mentioned, I think this particular um, part of the attraction maybe is not compelling in an immersive sense, but you know, um, there are perhaps reasons for that. This talks then about the room, um, and you'll see some of the videos. So this is actually the video screen that you can interact with, and they have the um, representation of Mithras here. And this talks about um, the rituals and the icon, the prevalence of the bull as a symbol, and they indicate there were no sacrifices that they've discovered archeologically of bulls. Um, and that's um, interactive. And then with the screen, there's also um, some sort of atmospheric screens in the background as well. And then this takes us into the actual temple. So you see a shot here in the booklet of um, the archeological work. And then you have some additional text that talks about um, how a chance discovery at a bomb site revealed this temple. Um, and as I've mentioned in this video, I will show you the old um, still images I have from 2004 when this was at a different site. Um, this shows you the site itself. I have to say, in, in some ways I like um, I mean, certainly what they've done with the new site is more audio-visually interesting, but I don't know, I found the old site kind of interesting too, just the fact that it was just in the middle of the street, and I remember taking my students there, and it had such an odd feel to it. This is tucked away, as you can see from the video. Um, you go through some glass doors, but it's, it's pretty well hidden um, at Bloomberg, um, at the Bloomberg complex. Um, yeah, so this talks a little more about the excavations, um, the temple itself. And this looks to be a representation of the site. And then this has a lot of detailed information about the site itself, about the archeology span of it. Um, really well done, this for sure. This is from, I guess, 1647 London, so much later. And this is essentially taking us through the various eras of the site. And then again, this is what you see um, when you walk in into the uh, area that has the artifacts. Okay, and actually I take that back, so I didn't realize that what we were seeing um, was actually the artwork. Um, so that is the actual gallery space. I thought it was a permanent, but they mention here that this is a uh, complex uh, wallpaper, rich in decorative and architectural motifs, whole buildings, exterior and interior areas are rendered in great detail. Okay, so that's actually kind of cool. Didn't realize that. And those are some representations of it. And yeah, a little bit more. So again, this is just uh, showing you more about um, the London, London uh, Mithraeum, the Temple of Mithras. Um, and uh, certainly they've done a really nice job at the site in terms of offering the guest a um, both attractive and informative um, informational brochure. Okay, we'll leave the brochure and start our journey downwards. And as you can see here, as you go down the stairs, you get this historical timeline. So it shows you the different eras of this particular site. And I think it's a pretty good way of establishing with the guests that all sites um, of history, right, have this depth to them, not just in terms of, you know, digging into the ground, but a temporal depth. And so it's, I think, an important recognition just of what archaeologists often deal with when there are sites like Bloomberg Space that has 
antiquity beneath it, and there's a preservation effort in terms of preserving remains and so forth, uh, historical aspects of antiquity. So this is a plaque that does tell you um, this is the one timed element, so you have to wait in this waiting area uh, until the next uh, show is available. And this tells you a little bit about the um, Mithric uh, religion. I won't be going into that in this um, video, but I encourage you certainly to go online and do as you do here, which is to look at the significance of it. Over 200 Mithric sites throughout Europe, I believe most of them were in Italy, so it's a very significant religion to study. We're actually inside the temple area. And again, this is entirely new at that old site. You didn't have any of that immersion, so this is quite a new experience. And what I'll do in a second is, um, so there, I have some of the audio available. It's really hard though to uh, make out on the video, but basically it's an immersive experience and you have a lot of focus on sound. There isn't so much happening visually. You'll see that these screens, there's a little bit of a light effect that happens, but most of what's going on is uh, sounds from the worshipers Essentially, it's a sonic reconstruction of the Mithric religion as perceived or as interpreted by archaeologists and other uh, scholars of antiquity. And I think it's an interesting choice in terms of using a sonic approach because we might think of something maybe more visual because we, we often, um, as um, people who interact with immersive sites, there's an overemphasis sometimes on the visual sense. And so it was interesting to have the sonic sense being developed so fully here at the London Mithraeum. So my audio from the um, presentation was actually really bad. It, there's some loud moments and it didn't capture the, the audio moments um, effectively enough to include them here. But you hear chanting, you hear music as in drumming, you have um, some narration, I believe, at the beginning of the presentation. And I would say, again, overall, it was not an over-the-top immersive experience. And I think one of the things we can think about, maybe more generally as students of immersive space and immersive design is, to what extent should you highlight that sensory experience with a guest if you have pedagogical goals? There's a huge difference between trying to present something in a space like this, which again, quasi-museum, interpretive center, pretty hard to classify. We don't have a lot of these spaces, I would say, in the States where I live. Um, and so in a site like this, I think a question becomes, do you emphasize the historical, educational, pedagogical side of things, or do you try to immerse the guests? I think in this case, they focused more on the educational side of things, and it wasn't as highly immersive as I anticipated. You could contrast this space, I think, best with Yor Jorvik in York, England. And it reminds me I need to do a video on Jorvik. I visited this site years ago and haven't done one. I visited actually as well in, in 2004 when I was on this trip uh, to the original uh, Temple of Mithras. You see some of the crowd there as the um, show is going on. You see some of the light effects up top there. Not a lot. But to contrast with Jorvik, Jorvik is a site where there is an archaeological, the Ark, the Archaeological Resource Center, and then there's the very, I would say, a little more touristy, consumerist Jorvik, which has a ride that you go through. It talks about archaeology. There are demonstrations with people making goods and crafts and different activities. And I think at Jorvik, the decision was made to make it a little more focused on that immersive experience. I'm not trying to suggest to you today that one is better than the other. I'm just trying to say there is a contrast, and it's something for us to think about as students of immersive design. That question of do we engage the guest in the immersive senses and maybe focus a little more on their enjoyment to the sacrifice of education, or do we educate them and focus on pedagogy and history and antiquity and explaining things to them, and thus maybe have to make it a little more staid or sobering experience by cutting down on the immersion. And I think it might be interesting for you today, if you're watching this video, to offer some of your comments here in the uh, comments below on this YouTube uh, video and ask yourself this question, you know, do I have to sacrifice immersive potential for the sake of education? Can you imagine a situation where these two could be playing hand in hand in such a way that the guest is immersed, but also, in other words, the guest is immersed and enjoying him or herself, and they're also learning something significant 
about the site in this case. So it's maybe something for us to reflect on as we begin to close this video today. I'm showing you some of the video after the experience is over. Again, as I suggested earlier, I think the level of immersion was a little bit less than I anticipated, but overall, I think they've created a wonderful space. And you think about how much it costs to create this space, um, it's a significant undertaking, to say the least, and you're seeing a little more of what the site looks like. What happens is after the experience is over, they encourage you to linger a bit and to explore the space and to, to look at it. And so I think there might be maybe up to four viewings per hour. I'm not entirely sure I didn't time that, but I know that there's a period of viewings and they allow, it looked like maybe 15 people into the space and then they... Um, bring in the next group and so forth. So I think they've done a good job in terms of creating um, flow in the attraction such that, you know, it's not overly crowded. And that, I think, is the necessity then for having those tickets because if you don't um, ticket in an exhibit like this, which is relatively small, you're going to run into queuing issues. So I think it's a really smart choice um, on the part of the designers of the space to uh, set it up in the way that they did in terms of the various queuing areas, the floors, the mixture of the educational experiences, the tablets as you enter, going down the stairs, the historical timeline, checking out a little more about the Mithric tradition on those video screens and then coming into the experience. Overall, from a storytelling perspective, I think it was good in terms of how they created this um, flow of the attraction as you um, enter and exit it. So I think you know, kudos to the designers of the space for that um, effort. And so with that, we'll bring this tour of the London Mithraeum to a close today. I hope you enjoyed this opportunity to visit this unique space in London. Um, if you're in the city, I think you definitely have to go. I mean, it's free. If you're, if you're a student of antiquity, antiquity, archaeology, or history, I think you would appreciate what's presented here. And if you're an immersive uh, student of, of design, you might look at this space and ask some questions, as I suggested earlier, about the interplay of teaching the guests something didactic, in this case about history and antiquity, and immersing them in an experience that is enjoyable and uh, meaningful to them in a personal sense. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video feature today here in London at the Temple of Mithras, uh, looking at how the past is preserved in this very contemporary space here at uh, the Bloomberg headquarters. So please come back for additional video features of the Immersive World's Handbook.